COVID cases are rising in Europe. And with media spreading fear over the Omicron variant, Europe goes back to lockdowns and mandates. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Blinkist. Do you want to read books that make you more confident and more educated? You don't have enough time? Well, Blinkist gives you access to thousands of amazing titles in audiobook form. It's an easy way to get more knowledgeable every day. I'll tell you more at the end. So, Europe has become the COVID epicenter again. Before this, Europe was just the epicenter of soccer riots the lamest thing to riot over besides balloons, which is a real riot that actually happened in Europe. Speaking of ballooning, the number of new COVID cases and deaths, they've risen to all time highs there. During the first week of November, more than 60% of the 3.1 million COVID-19 cases reported worldwide were from Europe. Coronavirus is catching hospital staff as well as politicians off guard in Germany. Emergency wards like this one, close to Munich, are filling up so fast, a patient was sent to Italy for treatment. Belgium seeing a surge too. Doctors there sounding the alarm, warning if cases continue to rise, overwhelmed hospitals may soon be forced to ration care. You know, we are facing a, a rocky road ahead as we move into the winter period. I can't believe this isn't happening in Florida. The good news is Florida man isn't the worst anymore. The bad news is this may be the dawn of Europe man. Much of rising European COVID cases is because of more relaxed COVID measures, colder weather forcing people indoors, and waning immunities from vaccines that were only partially effective to begin with at controlling spread. But politically, the rise in cases is being blamed on the unvaccinated, who make up the vast majority of hospitalizations. Although Europe has overall higher vaccination rates than the US, about one-third of Europeans are still not vaxxed. I think we know which ones. Many politicians don't like this, and they're calling it a pandemic of the unvaccinated. There are some countries, particularly in Central and Eastern Europe, where rates are absolutely skyrocketing. At the moment, um, hospitals are at, at breaking point. A couple of weeks ago, it was Bulgaria and Romania. Right at the moment now, it's Slovenia, Slovakia, Croatia countries like that. They're among the least vaccinated states in the EU. Around about half or less than half of their total population are vaccinated. This is surprising, mainly because considering some of the food in Central and Eastern Europe, it looks like the COVID vaccine is the only thing they won't put in their bodies. I'd recommend taking ivermectin to deworm whatever this dish is. With colder weather and the Omicron variant coming, many European leaders are looking to act fast. Their solution? Lockdowns and vaccine mandates. But are they going too far? More after the break. Welcome back. A new wave of vaccine mandates and lockdowns are sweeping across Europe. A third wave in a checkered past. COVID restrictions are basically ska music at this point. Last month, European countries began reimposing work from home mandates and tightening their coronavirus rules. These policies include things like requiring face masks, shutting down public venues, and closing non-essential stores from as early as 5 p.m. in some places. Even Bath and Body Works, which is totally essential. How is anyone supposed to survive without their home smelling like Twilight Woods fragrance mist or cucumber melon? Even Ireland, one of the most vaccinated countries in Europe, imposed curfews. Okay, I know politicians think if they impose a curfew, people won't go out drinking at night and spread COVID, but it's Ireland. People are just gonna go out drinking at three in the afternoon, which means they're spreading COVID and alcoholism. Meanwhile, the Czech Republic is specifically targeting the unvaccinated by barring them from non-essential public places. So is Slovakia. This is terrible for people who wanna live a normal life, but on the bright side, it's a great excuse for not going to your friend's improv show. 
Ooh, wish I could make it, Bill, but the government won't let me in. Until your friend does their improv show over Zoom. Is no place safe from improv? For the unvaccinated in Italy, a negative COVID test is no longer sufficient to enter public places. They need to actually get vaccinated or prove they've recovered from COVID. If they don't, the only other way an Italian can enter is through a big green pipe. Austria was especially strict about enforcing lockdowns for the unvaccinated, until the whole country went into lockdown for everyone. But good news, they're now lifting their lockdown, except for unvaccinated people. But that won't be a problem for much longer because Austria also became the first Western nation to order compulsory COVID vaccinations. Those will go into effect in February 2022. The last time I heard about an Austrian injecting themselves this much was Arnold Schwarzenegger before a bodybuilding competition. Other countries are following suit. Greece and the Czech Republic will mandate vaccines for anyone over 60. If they don't get vaxxed, they'll have to pay a big fine every month. Vaccinating anyone over 60? This is an absolute tragedy for everyone hoping COVID would uh, speed up getting an inheritance from their grandparents. Now you'll either have to wait longer to get it or you're gonna get way less thanks to all the fines. <clears throat> According to the Greek prime minister though, it's not a punishment, it's the price for health. And it's an act of justice for the vaccinated, even though it's an act of injustice for mooching Greek grandkids. Meanwhile, Germany is locking the unvaccinated out of public life and considering its own vaccine mandate. If approved, the German vaccine mandate could also go into effect in February 2022. Even vaccinated people who don't get a booster can lose their vaccination status nine months after getting their last shot. That's ridiculous. I'd ask if they're joking, but Germans aren't exactly known for their sense of humor. According to outgoing German Chancellor Angela Merkel, these measures are an act of national solidarity. And Germany's incoming Chancellor Olaf Scholz is all for mandatory vaccinations. The German Medical Association claims they're the only way to break out of the cycle of lockdowns. We need to change course now. There's really no time to lose. It's like a tanker heading towards a harbor wall. If we immediately counter-steer the tanker, it will keep moving for a while and maybe even hit the side of the harbor wall. Hopefully, however, it will not crash into it head on. We must use all countermeasures now. It's not very encouraging that even in their analogy to make things better, the supply chain is still getting messed up. But are these mandates the right thing to do? More after the break. Welcome back. At the start of the year, politicians promised that if enough people got vaccinated, they would open up society. But this is no longer the case. Blaming the new variants, Europe has returned to mandates and lockdowns, even for vaccinated people. Changes in policy and broken promises are making a lot of people trust their governments less and less. Tonight, violent protests erupting across Europe against strict COVID-19 restrictions. The continent again, the epicenter of the pandemic. In the Dutch city of Rotterdam, angry crowds seen torching police cars, burning bicycles and setting off flares. Police firing warning shots, injuring protesters, deploying water cannons, trying to quell the unrest that has been brewing for days after the Netherlands have reimposed lockdown to try and curb spiraling cases and now plans to introduce a vaccine passport for indoor venues. Es dauert schon seit zwei Jahren und findet kein Ende. Jeden Tag kommt was Neues und man weiß nicht, uh, was man glauben darf. So ist es. Ja, it's like the balloon riots all over again. Is all this worth it? To some European leaders, yes. They're not worried about people having less faith in them because they never had any faith in them to begin with. The rapidly emerging view in Europe is that vaccine mandates are not just plausible, they could pay off. Some European politicians are beginning to come to the conclusion that pushback is worth it in order to compel a slice of the population that would have otherwise been hard to win over. 
um, they're still not being won over. They're being forced. I'm pretty sure that's not the same thing. That's like a bully saying they won their classmate over on hitting themselves. And many public health experts say these police state style mandates won't actually work. A former chair of the British Medical Association Public Health Medicine Committee says the problem with mandatory vaccination is that it doesn't necessarily fix the low uptake issues. It is hard to enforce. How do you, in practice, vaccinate somebody who refuses consent? I think it looks something like this. Hey, what's that over there? Jab. This isn't unethical. It's justice for the vaccinated. Or you can fine people, sure, but they may not pay the fines. I mean, Greek people don't even pay their taxes. And now you expect them to pay a fine for doing literally nothing? Over a third of Greeks aren't vaxxed, waxed, or paying tax. There are signs that if you have vaccine mandates, slightly more people will get vaccinated, but they won't be happy about it. It's like being dragged to your girlfriend's work Christmas party. You don't even like your coworkers, so why do you think I'd enjoy this? Proponents of mandates argue this is ethical because it will stop unnecessary deaths. These mandates can also stop people from using up healthcare resources that could be used for emergencies. And in countries where the government runs all the healthcare, the government pays for your healthcare. So the government feels it also has the right to tell you what measures you need to take to stay out of their hospitals, like getting vaccinated. But why stop there? Why not force people to do other things to keep them out of their hospitals, like stop eating Central and Eastern European foods. As we've mentioned in a previous video, forcing harsh rules without consent can create problems down the line. Like when there's a future emergency, people won't trust what the government tells them to do. The head of health economics and policy at the Institute for Advanced Studies in Vienna says mandates deepen the chasm in our society. And vaccine mandates may well serve as a strong push to more radicalization. An advisor to the WHO says mandatory schemes during a crisis will be counterproductive because when people have what we call conspiracy theories or they have misbeliefs or misunderstandings, they will only strengthen their opinions. Reliance on mandates could also be a slippery slope to more authoritarian measures. Just look at Australia. They literally have quarantine camps. People who've been detained there call them dehumanizing. One Australian woman who hadn't even tested positive with COVID recounted her experience after being forcibly detained at one of them. So it doesn't even matter if you test negative on your first test, your second or your third. They need to, because you're a close contact, you have to stay in there for 14 days, no matter what. You feel like you're in prison. You feel like you've done something wrong. It's inhumane what they're doing. Like you, you are so small. You, They just overpower you and you're literally nothing. It's like you do what we say or you're in trouble, we'll lock you up for longer. The government is treating Australians like they're all criminals? They're taking Throwback Thursday way too far. Here in the US, officials say they want to avoid draconian measures. We can curb the spread of the virus without having to uh, in any way shut down our economies. But will the US really keep its promise? President Joe Biden, after all, has a history of going back on his word when it comes to COVID measures. Like when a year ago he said vaccinations would not be mandatory. And then over the summer he clarified vaccines are not mandatory unless you refuse. This has led many to fear that it might not be too long before Biden starts trying to win people over. Frankly, I think governments in Europe are going about this all wrong. You can't force people to get vaccinated. You have to offer people a choice, like you can either get vaccinated or watch improv shows over Zoom. Vaccination rates will skyrocket. And this episode is sponsored by Blinkist. If you're the kind of person who wants to learn and improve yourself, you're gonna love Blinkist. It's got thousands of books in all these categories, politics, history, money and investment, and dozens more. One of the coolest things Blinkist does is recommend titles based on things I'm already interested in. For example, it recommended me a Blink of this book, Presidents of War by Michael Bischloss. It's about why so many presidents went to war and in each case, whether it was for national defense or some other purpose. Not all of them are noble. 
Blinkist condensed this 700-page book into a quick 18-minute read. Blinkist condenses thousands of titles like this into short reads and audiobooks. I can read them or listen to them podcast style. It's great for my commute or just while I'm doing stuff around the house. I can also access them offline. Blinkist also gives me full-length audiobooks. Blinkist already has 14 million active users, and they're offering a special deal for America Uncovered fans. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash America Uncovered are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. So check out the link below. Your seven-day trial is completely free, and you can cancel at any time during this period. So why not try it out? And you'll see just how much you can learn. I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.